As we all know, SCP-096 is famous for the extremes it is capable of when looked at, and has already shown it will stop at nothing on its path towards its victims. Many of us have probably wondered, however, what would happen if SCP-096 looked at a mirror, or if someone on an airplane looked at its face. In this SCP exploration episode, we attempt to answer these hypothetical questions about SCP-096. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel with notifications on, so you don't miss any of our SCP theory and top 5 SCP videos. And very soon we are exploring the history and identity of one of the most famous SCP anomalies in the SCP wiki. Also, in this video we will be referring to our SCP-096 origin video, so definitely make sure to watch it if you haven't already. Firstly. We will explore what would happen should a human look at an SCP-096 photograph while on an airplane. When we explore the SCP-096 wiki, we come across an incident report when SCP-096 was triggered by a D-class located in the Tongass Trench, the second deepest ocean trench after the Marianas Trench. When the D-class looks at the photograph, the shy guy immediately breaches containment and begins traveling towards its victim. The exact distance is redacted, but consists of three numbers and is written out in kilometers, so we can assume a median value of around 500 kilometers or 310 miles. And in the document it is stated that the shy guy requires around 40 minutes to reach the D-class's location, so we calculate an average speed of around 750 kilometers per hour or around 500 miles per hour. Running at that speed is quite astonishing and requires huge amounts of energy. In the SCP wiki, it isn't mentioned that SCP-096 eats and drinks, so this means the anomaly receives its energy via anomalous means, which explains how it is able to generate such power. Moreover, after reaching the ocean surface, 096 swims the 11 kilometers or 35,000 feet needed to reach the submarine located in the trench. Diving 35,000 feet underwater takes time, even for the shy guy, and the anomaly has no direct oxygen supply during that time, so we can assume that SCP-096 either doesn't need to breathe at all, or can hold its breath for extended periods of time. Also, as we discussed in our SCP-096 backstory video, the shy guy likely originates from Mount Everest, which at a height of around 8,800 meters or 29,000 feet, is quite close to the standard cruising altitude of an airplane at around 11 kilometers or 35,000 feet. All this means that should SCP-096 attack an airplane, it would most definitely survive being at this altitude. So back to our little plane experiment. When the D-Class looks at the photograph, 096 breaches containment immediately and tries to get as close to its victim as possible. This means going directly under the airplane and moving as it moves. Airplanes can move at speeds of around 500 miles per hour or 850 kilometers per hour, a speed that SCP-096 is likely to be able to reach. However, the plane is also located far up in the sky and SCP-096 has never been tested so extremely. As we've seen from the 096 and 6A2 test, when the two anomalies are put against one another and battle till they both stop, 096 has in the past not been able to kill its victim, and in such cases calms down eventually but appears very distressed for an extended period of time. So it's possible SCP-096 simply rages for a while, unable to reach its target, far above. However, the plane can stay in the sky indefinitely and must at some point land to refuel. And in this case the shy guy would probably be very happy to welcome its friend directly on the runway. But this is assuming SCP-096 can't somehow get up to it. And as we've seen from the submarine test, 096 has been able to generate vast amounts of energy, running at speeds of around 500 miles per hour or 850 kilometers per hour. So one of the first things 096 could try to do is jump as high as it can and see if it can reach the D-Class. This would require huge amounts of energy for obvious reasons, 
but SCP-096 is, as we've already seen, an indestructible anomaly which doesn't eat and drink, produces energy from nowhere and can run as fast as an airplane. So it would definitely be possible that SCP-096 simply jumps up to the plane and reaches it. 096 would also need to analyze the trajectory of the D-Class to know just how fast and in which direction to jump. The shy guy anomalously knows by whom and where his face was looked at, however, so intercepting a plane would probably be within its capabilities. And should the shy guy fail, he can simply try again and again if the plane doesn't land beforehand. Just imagine the D-Class's face when he sees a jumping 096 through a window, who tries again and again to grab the plane, mouth wide open. Certainly not your typical SCP Foundation experiment which is also why it has never been tested. Another totally different possibility is that the shy guy adapts to the situation, as he has already adapted to the terrain on Mount Everest. This may include, for example, the shy guy growing longer and more powerful legs in order to jump higher, or even wings, in an attempt to fly up to its victim. And we would consider this believable, because 096 is capable of regeneration, as we've seen from the 096 and 173 test, during which the shy guy's neck is snapped multiple times but regenerates effortlessly. And regeneration and quick adaptation are scientifically very similar. Both require vast amounts of energy, which 096 certainly has, as we've seen from its feats of strength, and specific genes which enable it to grow its body further, which the shy guy also has, as his body can regenerate. Or perhaps SCP-096 would attempt a combination of both, growing skin between its arms and body and between its legs like a wingsuit, jumping and then trying to fly up to its victim should the jump prove insufficient. The idea that SCP-096 can down planes is further supported by the fact that in SCP-096's incident log, a confiscated CNN broadcast is played in which a downed military plane without any US military insignia is shown with a large hole in the side of the fuselage. It is also mentioned that only three bodies were found in the plane, despite it requiring a crew of 20, which supports the idea that as few men as possible were used to minimize casualties. Right after, an MTF unit arrives in military helicopters and demands that the camera is turned off. And though it is not written directly that SCP-096 was the cause of the incident, all hints lead to this conclusion. In any case, should a D-Class on a plane look at an SCP-096 photograph, he will be killed sooner or later, either in the air or when the plane lands. So in this SCP-096 plane test, the entity doesn't disappoint and shows us once again how unstoppable it becomes when enraged. Perhaps the only thing that can stop the entity is itself. An entity which attacks anyone that looks at its face looks at a mirror. What happens? The first logical thing to do is look for such experiments in the SCP wiki. Unfortunately, we do not find any such tests. We do however find an SCP-096 mirror test in the SCP sandbox wiki, where one posts his or her SCP entry to be critiqued and if it is positively assessed, it can be posted on the official SCP wiki. There, it is reported that the shy guy doesn't react at all to the mirror, suggesting he is blind. Being in the SCP sandbox wiki, however, this test isn't considered canon. And we don't find the idea that SCP-096 is blind to be very logical, because we believe in the SCP-096 backstory we talked about in our SCP-096 theory video, and no part of the adaptation process requires the mountaineer to become blind. In this case, the mirror will most definitely induce the shy guy to react, as from 096's general behavior, crying for extended periods of time, hiding its face and attacking people that see it, the entity finds something disturbing about itself. And seeing just that with its own eyes would probably disturb the entity even further. In this case, one's first impulse would be to break the mirror to avoid seeing this disturbance any longer, which SCP-096 would most likely do as well. 
but this wouldn't remove the emotional damage and suffering induced. Let's not forget 096 was formerly a mountaineer who was attacked by SCP-1529, an SCP which tortures you if you refuse it killing you quickly, and spent decades on Mount Everest suffering and adapting to the terrain, freezing and starving the whole way, unable to get off the mountain. Nobody outside of the SCP Foundation would survive an encounter with the entity and be crazy enough to put a mirror in front of it, so this would most likely be the very first time the entity sees itself after its transformation. Just imagine yourself being tortured in a cell for 60 years, looking at a mirror and seeing that you have become SCP-096. This would undoubtedly cause disbelief, grief, and if you're someone with a temperament similar to 096's, uncontrollable rage and possibly self-harm. So SCP-096 would probably start clawing away at its face, screaming and raging like never before, and possibly breach containment. So would SCP-096 attempt to kill itself in this situation? Probably, but as we've seen from the 096 and 173 test, the shy guy is capable of very quick regeneration, which would probably nullify all damage it deals to itself. And knowing that, according to our theory, the shy guy was originally a normal mountaineer who had his life prolonged by SCP-1529 in order to suffer as much as possible, this could very well have made him immortal. And even if he wasn't, his survival instinct would kick in at some point, preventing any more self-harm. So an entity which has suffered its whole life has just seen what it has become in the process and wants to finally end its suffering but finds out it can't kill itself. So only one natural reaction remains, a containment breach and uncontrollable rage. After breaching, distressed like never before, it would run around and kill anyone it comes across and destroy everything it finds destructible. And as we know, SCP-096 is capable of battling it out with SCP-682, one of the most powerful anomalies in the SCP wiki, so such a containment breach would be devastating. Which is why an SCP-096 mirror experiment has never been attempted in the SCP Foundation, and hopefully never will be. This concludes our video on the SCP-096 mirror test. So do you think these SCP tests fit well in the SCP lore? If there are any other scary SCPs that you would like to see us experiment with, don't hesitate to share them with us in the comments. Please make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this type of content, as we have many more interesting scary SCP videos in our top SCP series. And soon we will explore more SCP theories about the scariest SCP creatures in the wiki. And as always, we will see you in the next video.